against oppression by any means necessary. Brothers and sisters, are you ready? We must be a little daring. This is our reality now. Hello, my name is Heather Hurt with the NRW, where nerds rule the world. And I am here with Reggie Blythewood and, uh, sorry, Bythewood and Gina Prince Bythewood, the two of the executive producers of National Geographic's Genius MLKX, the fourth season of the Emmy winning, Emmy, wow, I'm just on the ball here, Emmy award winning series. Um, how are you two today? Good, thank you. How are you? <laughs> Good. Are y'all excited? Your, your show drops today. It's as, as of this recording. Excited? Yeah. Very excited. Yeah, really excited to um, just put this out into the world. Um, really excited to just examine, you know, Malcolm, Martin, Betty, Coretta, and so many other people that just um, put their lives and hearts and souls on the line to make the world better. Absolutely. And y'all did it. There were very few words when I was watching it other than wow. Like it's, it's so deep, it's so raw, um, which is something that I, I wanna talk to y'all about a little bit today. These two are Goliaths, Goliaths in every sense of the word. Um, but so often in history books where we don't see enough of them either way, but in history books, what we do see is we see them kind of put on this hero pedestal where they almost become like superheroes. You don't get to see them from this humanistic point of view, but in your show, you give a very, broken, a very the thematic way of uh, showing fault and human in them. Uh, Gina, I'll, I'll go with you first. Why, why did y'all go at it from that angle instead of trying to keep them as these heroic figures? It's really something we said from the very beginning. We wanted to take them off the t-shirts and make them real and tangible so that an audience can see themselves within them. Um, they were incredible men Betty and Coretta were incredible women, um, but they're human. We wanted to show the full breadth of their humanity um, because it's it's the flaws within them, it's their vulnerability, um, it's the struggles that they went through, um, both physically and mentally, which informed who they were, what informed their fight, which makes really their fight even more dramatic because everything they overcame, they had the stamina and the commitment to keep pushing forward, to keep believing this vision that they both had and a vision that was so similar. They just had different ways of going about it. Um, but those personal moments that so few know about, like that's what was most exciting to be able to share that, to share these great love stories um, that they had to show moments with their children, um, to show when they questioned, that's, that's what makes people real and tangible. Absolutely. Done, it's done wonderfully. Um, Reggie, to follow up with that, um, in other seasons of the show, we they kind of pinpointed on one person in history. Could you explain why y'all decided to go Malcolm X and MLK side by side? Sure. I mean, one of the you know nice things that happened to us is Nat Geo asked if we'd be interested in doing a narrative about Dr. King. Mm -hmm. Um. And on our response in our pitch to them is that you don't get to have Martin without Malcolm. And we went on to explain why, about how the movement, how the country needed both of them. Um, really wanted to tell this narrative of how they were, you know, opposite sides of the same coin and, and really examine how both of their lives intersected. And so it was really fun and exciting and challenging to do a narrative where, um, you know, we, we dealt with both of their lives and really just have to just give credit to like an amazing writing staff, uh, the showrunners that we brought in, Damian Macedon and Raphael Jackson, uh, Jess Stetson, who in the eighties wrote this play called The Meeting that deals with this fictionalized meeting between Malcolm and Martin and to be able to pull them back and to write our season four pilot of MLKX. Absolutely. Oh, I, I read the script for that in theater class one year. It was oh, so yeah. good. Yeah, it was wonderful. Um, la last question. Can you tell me about the, si the soundtrack a little bit? Because you really get the emotional impact with that. Gina, what were your thoughts? Who, who came up with 
what songs came on. Well, it's interesting. I mean, we, we knew we wanted to use contemporary music because we didn't want this to feel like a museum piece. We wanted, we're telling the story that took place in the past, but the themes and everything are so contemporary for today. Um, but it's interesting, the pilot really set the tone and uh, I'll give all props to Reg. You know, we, we have an incredible music supervisor, but Reg chose a couple songs which really set the tone for how we, we continued with the rest of the hours. And um, I mean, that Tem song, you know, that, that, you know, to be able to marry that vibe, that emotion with the images, uh, again, it set the tone of what we were trying to do. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 we do have like an amazing music supervisor, amazing uh, composer, and Terrence Blanchard. And um, um, I think that by using contemporary music at times helps us understand the urgency of the story, you know, in today. Absolutely. And it was so heartfelt. Thank you guys so much. Uh, the show is the first two episodes are streaming right now on Hulu and Disney Plus. Thank you guys. <laughs>